Welcome to Something to Talk About from the Bainbridge Island Senior Community Center. Today, we are going to do a little homework here for those of us who use the online registration process or have thought about doing that. We're going to walk through a new version of that, which has been put out by the company that we use to help us with our scheduling. Uh, something to talk about is on... Zoom and often in person two times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And we'd like to begin by acknowledging that we are meeting on the ancestral homeland of the Puget Sound Coast Salish people, specifically the Suquamish tribe, people who have lived on these lands and waters since time immemorial. We honor them and we continue to learn from their stewardship. And thank you also to Fieldstone Communities of Bainbridge Island, which sponsors something to talk about. Fieldstone offers assisted independent living and memory care up on Rolling Bay. They have uh, respite care and day stays, and you can learn more by calling Celia or Jamie at 206-594-1010. In fact, uh, they'd be glad to give you a free lunch at the Bar and Grill so you can look at their lovely facility up there. 206-594-1010. Uh, so what I'd like to do today is I'd like to show you how to get to our um, online registration. So if you go to our um, website or if you get the regular email, any of the links in that email will take you there. You know that uh, you can get there by clicking on either, you know, an activity link or you can go down here and you can... Um, Let's see if I can hide those controls. Uh, you can click on My Active Center, which is how we um, have uh, activities organized online. Everything that we schedule is scheduled uh, so that the front desk can register you for them over the, over the phone line. Or you can sign up when you walk in the door at the kiosk. Or... You can sign up in advance online. They're all connected. So My Active Center is the way to get there, and it has a new look as of uh, as of last week, I think. So when you go to My Active Center, it should show you activities upcoming for the next few days. Actually, it says the next 365 days. But you could switch that and pick the next seven days or the next 30 days. But the default is 365 days. So if you wanted to just check and see what was scheduled for the next week, you could pick seven days and scroll down here. You could also uh, sort by whether it's a paid or free event, mm -hmm. whether it's virtual or in person, uh, whether it fits one of these categories, or certain hours of the day or weekdays. So these are all uh, quick sort things if they are helpful to you. To me, the most interesting thing is what's going to happen in the next few days, because I might do it online or in person. Um, and to get to sign up, to actually get the registration, you need to have a login. So if you have never done this, you need to sign up. And when you sign up, it will ask you for your key tag. Uh, some centers have the option of signing oh. up without a key tag, but we are going to try to use this just with the key tag so that we know everybody who's joining and um, we can keep track of who's who's got one just for otherwise, I don't know who would anybody could sign up and we wouldn't maybe know how to reach them. Is so the, the, the I'm sorry. Is that the key fob? The key fob is the other, yes, it's the it's the little uh, item that you get when you join. And if you don't have one, please let us know. It looks like this. Mm -hmm. And it's got a number on the back. And you put the number, including the X, in here to register. So it's going to use that X number plus your phone number to find your your back your uh, your registration on the back side and then you will be able to set up an account. Rita, you had a question? Right, I already have an account that I've had for a long time, but it, I don't have the key tag. It's just my email and a password. Do I have to go into this newer system and- No, and if, 
have a key tag. If you have an account already, at some point you probably put in the key tag, but you're just using your name and password after okay. you make this registration. And your current setup will work just fine. You don't have to re-register. Okay, thank you I, so much. Yeah, I was able to just log in, and I will do that in a minute, uh, <laughs> with my existing sign-in. Um, but if you wanted to, uh, if you were setting up an account, you would give them the key tag number and your phone number, and then the email address that you want to use to sign in. So this is any email address that you want to use, and you would set up a password. And these little, um, that's a little open or closed eye. See, it's got its little mm -hmm. eyelashes sitting down because it's closed. So when you do that, then you can actually read the password. So you can check to make sure that it matches, making it much easier to match if you can. You probably want a better password, but there, confirmation, the passwords match. Then you can sign up. And then you will be able to sign up for classes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in. And I set up mine so that both me and my spouse are both on the same account. So that means that I can sign my spouse up for classes or activities too. And that's just a button that you could click uh, mm -hmm. when you're registering that says include, or I want to be able to sign up for my spouse. And then you'll need the key tag and the phone number that's associated with your spouse. But here I am now, I read and Jennifer, and these are the activities that are coming up. And this allows me to be able to sign up for them. So I see over the next seven days, we have some workshops. To see what they are, I need to click on this and it will open up the page and it will say, oh, we have Introduction to Watercolors coming up June 26th. So that's a workshop that's coming up this week. It's free. Uh, there's no space. The activity is full. But if it weren't, I would be able to sign up here and register. Uh, also come, yeah, like, sure, ask a question. Okay, um, if we are already, where you sign up up here, how often do you have to sign up? So you have to sign up for each event that you want to sign up for. So if you want to sign up for Bard Read, it's coming up on the 27th of June. So I can add that one to the cart. It's just showing the next seven days. If I want to go for the next month, here's the next 30 days. I can add it to the cart here and here and here. And then I'll be signed up through July. If I want to be able to sign up for the whole year, then I went to 365. Now I can sign up for August and September for Bard Read. One thing that you should know is that one of the new aspects of this is that we'll only let you sign up for a certain period of time. We can control that. One of our challenges has been that a few classes, most notably um, art classes, people will sign up for the whole year at, as soon as they can. So this new system allows us to say, uh, we're going to open the signups for the class 20 days or seven days in advance of the class, which will allow more people to have an opportunity to take some of our more popular classes. Um, classes like the Bard Read, where we seem to have plenty of space, we'll probably just keep it as is and you could sign up in advance. But you have to sign up for each program individually. And I will repeat that if you ever have any challenges or uh, problems with this, you can always call the front desk at 206-842-1616, and a volunteer at the front desk will be happy to do their best to help you. And if they can't help, then they'll ask me or Mary or uh, Lena to help you on the back side. Okay, question? Yeah. It was more, more to the point of what I was trying to ask before. Uh, supposing I had about uh, different four or five different things I wanted to do in the next seven days. Right. For each one of them, I have to go up above here 
and s sign in with all with my uh, kebab number and everything. Right? right. You sign in. Once you're signed in, you don't need to use the FOB number again. You'll just use your, you'll just, and in fact, in this case, I've saved my password. So all I have to do is log in and it says, oh, you want to use that password? Fine. And then you're logged in. See, so if you look at this, it says log in or sign up. Once you've signed up, you just can log in. And it's already got my pass, my name and my password there. Am I signing up every single day or, you know? You can I sign up in advance. So when you get the Monday morning email, you can click on a link there and sign up for a class as you see it. I see lots of people after I send out the email signing up for activities that are mentioned in the email. They just click on the link that says register here and it will take you to the right place. Um, and you can sign up for several things in advance. So let's say that I want to sign up for the CPR training. There are 23 spaces available. I can add that to my cart. I can, because I've put my spouse on there with me, I could sign up me and my spouse at the same time, or I could just sign myself up, or I could just sign my spouse up. So I'm going to take the CPR class. So I'm going to register for that. And then I'm going to say, oh, what else is coming up? Write your own obituary. There are no spaces available right now. I think that's because we haven't opened it up yet. Um, and what it could say is there are 15 spaces, but it won't become available until later. So I'll need to check back and do that later for the write your own obituary. But I'm going to take the... Um, I'm going to take the... Uh, Art workshop. Well, there are three spaces available for the July 3rd workshop. So I'll add that to my cart too. Well, no, I think I'll let Jennifer go to that. She loves to do art. Now I have two things that I've signed up for. You can see that, right? The CPR class and the art workshop. Do you see both of those? Yep. And they don't cost anything. So there, I owe zero. Maybe I should show you what it looks like if I sign up for a class that costs something. I'm going to take, oh, I could also search by name. So I know there's slow flow yoga, and I can see that has a fee because there's a dollar sign next to it. So I am going to add that to the cart. Now I have two free events and a $6 event. So I can go to my cart. And I'm going to see what I can do. One of the things that's added to this now is that if you wanted to, you could add a donation to the Senior Center as you're signing up. No need to, just an option. You also, at this point, could remove one of these classes if you decided you weren't going to be able to make it to the art workshop after all. You can also add funds to your wallet. So you can see that Jen has $36 in her wallet. I have zero. So if I wanted to add money to the wallet, I could do that. Or I could pay for funds with wallet balances. So here's how you add funds to a wallet. Here's how you um, pay with the wallet. Or if I'm gonna buy this, I'm gonna pay for selected items. It's going to say, this is free. This is free. I could use, I use $6 for my wallet to pay for the slow flow yoga. I can print myself a receipt mm. if I want, if I have a printer at home. <laughs> Those are getting rarer. Um, and I can view my schedule so that I have a list of my upcoming activities that I'm scheduled for. And I can find that all the time by uh, checking out my activities and saying, what are my activities? I have slow flow yoga today. Next week, I have the art workshop. Beyond next week, I have the CPR training. There are also groups I could sign up. So I could renew my membership here if I wanted to by uh, participating here. You know, I could sign up for Evergreen Singers. Or if I wanted to join the German Conversation Group, I could sign up here. So this is a way that you might be able to uh, navigate um, 
catching up with things online and getting a little ahead of the game. Any other questions? I saw that you accessed, oops. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Um, how do you get just to your account? If you want to put money in your wallet and you're not signing up for a class that you owe for, how do you do that? I think what you do is you go to your cart. So there's nothing in my wallet now. Oh, okay. I went to this little shopping cart picture. Right. Good question. And then it took me here and I could add funds to my wallet. Okay. Got it. By going to the cart. And this okay. will also, this will, if you have notifications, you might see something show up here um, that might be for an upcoming event. If you were signed up for an online Zoom class like Spanish or um, Waterfront Book Group, right before the activity occurred, you might get a link from here. It also will show up in your email, but this is a way that you can check on that. And there are many, many centers that are using this. So they continue to update the program um, at my senior center because they keep growing and we keep making requests. The next thing that we're expecting to happen soon is that you'll be able to pay classes from your wallet when you log in at the kiosk Hi. at the Hi. senior Hi. center. Hi. So keep an eye on that. And we'll probably do another one of these little... Uh, presentations at some point just to uh, let everybody know how it works. There we go. Stop sharing. I have one other question. Are you able to use this to sign up for the small local trips or do you have to register through reception for that? Another very good question. Trips are not on are not shown up on the um, online window. And okay. I don't know why that is, but it, it they don't show up. Um, okay. I can ask that question, but yes, that would be nice for those local trips to show up here too. Um, so we're really grateful that they keep updating and improving this i know change is always a challenge but i like a lot of things about this that uh, that i think will make it easier for people one of the things that's been very frustrating is that people will put money on account the my senior center my active center folks call it your wallet um and then you don't know how much you have or if you're going to sign up for something online you are paying for it while not paying down your wallet um and this allows you to see exactly where you are on that and add or subtract from the money you have on account without having to stand in line at the front desk. I'm sorry, I have another question. You are, no, no need to be sorry. I'm happy to answer as many as there are. So I'm thinking from uh, the perspective of someone at the front desk, you know, someone doing reception, um, is this a way that we could also have people renew their um, uh, medical release forms or their authorizations on a regular basis so they could just do it online and we wouldn't have to, you know, print lists and try and grab them when they came in? They don't currently have an online waiver form, okay. but we are looking, that is something that they're working on on adding so that you could um, fill out a, a waiver um, the other thing that we've thought about is the idea of attaching a waiver on our website. So right now you can fill out a um, membership form, and uh, we really appreciate that if you do that. You can do that without um, without having to come into the center and print out a physical form. And we're, we're working to try to, at that end, add... Um, add the waiver so you could so here you can see when it's under benefits we have a link for an online application form and you can fill this out if you have a change of your email or anything else you can always fill out the online application form which lets you just type in the information uh 
here online rather than having to print it all out or, or do it from, you know, in person. And if we add the waiver to this and we'll just get you to check it, then uh, we can get all the information we need without having to have those folks at reception track you down. You know what, Reed, also to add, sorry to interject there, but adding on to that, if you go back one screen. Yeah. To click on that. If you go back one screen, I think right below the link that you just clicked, there, see right there, waiver. Yeah, so the, this I mean, waiver, this waiver is a PDF form, oh, okay. which you can print out and bring in. Right. Yeah. Uh, which is helpful, but um, yeah, but it's not, it's not, you can't type it out online. Okay. Gotcha. But yes, that's, that's true. The waiver is posted online. And the application form is actually an online form. And we really appreciate it when people indicate with the online application form when they're actually, um, you know, <laughs> signing up. Because sometimes it's hard for us to figure out who it was that signed up. Okay, I think... Uh, I. I think that's it for now to be continued. Thank you all. And thank you for your questions, Barbara and Rita and Sheila. And uh, if you have any other questions, you can always email me at reed at biseniorcenter.org or give us a call. Thank you.